A lot of you guys have noticed that in 2024, Iga Sviantec has a new service motion. In today's video, I'm going to show you what changes she has made to her serve. But before I do so, I'm going to talk about her serve in general. And Iga happens to be a spot server. She doesn't necessarily rely on a big, powerful serve to win matches. Why? Because she's one of the best baseline players that we've ever seen on the WTA. So in other words, she uses variety on her serve. She knows how to slice, kick, and flatten out her serve, hits it into the desired spot, and then builds her points from the baseline. Her average speed on her first serve is 103 miles an hour. Fastest serve that she's ever struck is at 114 miles an hour. She gets a high percentage of first serves in in 2022 and 2023. She got 65% of her first serves in play. So before Iga has made this change, her serve looked fluid, it looked continuous. And let me show you what it used to look like. So she would lead the way with her hitting hand. She would take the racket back to about right here, the tip of the racket would point towards the back fence. And it is then when she would initiate the toss and start going up with her hitting hand. Now Iga had a full extension of the arm when the racket went backwards and she would maintain this full extension into her trophy phase. Now she also happens to serve with a pinpoint stance. So as the racket hit this spot with the arm being fully extended, Iga would start bringing her back foot in and bringing her arm closer to her head. She also has a small unorthodoxy where she turns her strings towards the other side of the court. Now, Iga is one of the best athletes we've ever seen on the WTA, and she is very explosive on her serve, and she also loads the serve very aggressively. So, in addition to having a deep knee bend, Iga also bends forwards. Now, I made a video a long time ago where I talked about the three different ways you can position your toss arm after you have released the ball. And Iga happens to continue to go backwards with her toss arm. Now, most players will have the toss arm straight when they bring it backwards. And if the toss arm continues to go backwards after the ball has been released, it's a little bit easier to bend the body forward. Now, in Iga's case, it's slightly unorthodox because her toss arm is bent and her hitting arm is slightly turned forward. So while her loading position looks kind of awkward, it is still a fundamentally sound loading position. Now, once Iga unloads into her serve, she hits a fundamentally sound serve and as I already said she's able to mix it up by kicking it slicing it and flattening it out she's a very explosive player off the baseline but she's also explosive on her serve so what has changed on her new service motion well Iga doesn't do this anymore she has gotten rid of her take back and what she does now is something that I cover on my website intuitivetennis.com and it's something that I feature in my problems at the rec level collection of videos. And I call this specific problem the reverse lag. So a regular lag is when you toss the ball first while the hitting arm lags behind. Now a reverse lag will be the exact opposite. You take the racket up first and then toss the ball later. And unfortunately, that is exactly what Iga does now on her serve. She takes her racket arm up first somewhere around here, and it is then when she initiates the toss. So unfortunately, apart from her taking the racket all the way back, the only thing she has changed is gotten rid of her rhythm. And now she takes the racket up first, tosses the ball, and from this moment on, the serve is exactly as it was before the change. Generally speaking, most players will benefit from a rhythm on the serve with a longer take back. Why? Because number one, it gives the player more time to get into the proper loading position. And you do build up some momentum by taking the racket back and up on the serve. So in other words, without a rhythm, when you just take the racket here, toss the ball and you accelerate, you have to accelerate from a zero to a hundred. While when you have a rhythm on your serve, a full take back, it gives the racket a little bit more time to build up momentum and the acceleration is not so sudden. And unfortunately, as I was studying Iga's new serve and compared it to the old serve, she has unfortunately not corrected two mistakes that she does on the serve. Mistake number one is the fact that Iga has a small racket drop leak. And you might be wondering, Nick, what is a racket drop leak? So it's a situation where the racket drops prior to the body unloading. So optimally, what should happen on the serve is that the body should be fully loaded and the racket should be on the hitting side of the body. And now, simultaneously, players should unload the body and drop the racket. On a racket drop leak, the racket will go into the racket drop 
prior to the body unloading. So there are players who have a very small racket drop leak and there are players who have a very big racket drop leak. And if you have to have a big racket drop leak, in other words, if you drop the racket all the way down here and then start to accelerate, you're gonna lose a lot of range of motion and you're not gonna maximize your potential on the serve. However, when the racket drop leak is small, you only lose somewhere between one to 5% of your surf power. And why does Iga have a racket drop leak? Well, it could possibly be related to the fact that when Iga used to take a racket all the way back and then take it up into the trophy phase, the arm was completely straight in the trophy phase. And it was then when she pulled up that back foot. So the pinpoint stance timing was not optimal. What should happen is the following. The back foot should go up as the racket is going up into the trophy phase. But not only that, it is disadvantageous to have the arm straight as it goes into the trophy phase. There's no problem with extending the arm on the take back, but as it starts going up, the arm should go into a bend and the hand should be closer to the player's head. This is a much cleaner way to serve. It's a much easier way to time your unloading. And unfortunately, Iga's new serve, the abbreviated one with the reverse lag, did not correct this problem because when Iga takes her racket up into the trophy phase, she is still completely extended and still has the same pinpoint stance timing that she had before and she still has a small racket drop leak. Now in addition to all that, Iga also has a elbow position that's disadvantageous. So when the arm is extended all the way in the trophy phase, the elbow is quite high. And when she brings the arm in, the elbow is slightly above the level of the shoulder. This is something you don't want on the serve. Ideally, you want to have the elbow slightly below the level of the shoulder. Why is that? Because what should happen to the elbow is a movement that goes up and out. So if Iga could correct the timing of her pinpoint stance, if she could drop her elbow a little bit, I do believe that she could serve one to 5% faster. Now you ask yourself, Nick, she's a four time Grand Slam champion. She's a seven time WTA 1000 winner. How can she get all those results with a serve that's suboptimal? Well, that's what makes the tennis game so complex. While Iga does have a great serve, it is not perfect. She could be serving better. I do believe that her top speed of 114 could increase to maybe 120 if she applied those small little changes. Now it is also true that Iga is someone who doesn't rely on her serve so much. She could win many French Opens. She can win many hard court tournaments, even Grand Slams with her old serve. However, I will say that Iga's weakest surface, which is grass, could benefit from a little bit better serving and giving her the ability to get more free points. Now, for you guys at the recreational level, if you happen to have some of these mistakes that Iga has, for example, an elbow position that's too high, a straight arm in the trophy phase of your serve, an incorrect timing of your pinpoint stance where you pull the racket in too late, if you happen to have a racket drop leak, these are all things that you should work on. Why? Because these mistakes have more of an effect at the recreational level compared to the professional level. 